It says two things. Uh, uh, the first and ground shaking one is that Erdogan and the AKP's dominance of Turkish politics is over. As you well know, the people used to call him Teflon Erdogan, right? Nothing bad stuck to him ever, including very bad economic uh, circumstances. But going forward, Erdogan and the AKP will have to fight tooth and nail for every vote. They're down to uh, 35 percent now, which is roughly where they started when right. they first founded the party in 2001. The second point that I'd like to highlight is that despite more than a decade of political polarization, values, social issues, etc., at the end of the day, People are still voting with their pockets. And this was Turkey's version of it's the economy stupid. What does he do <laughs> with his new central bank team, with his, uh, I'll call it chancellor of the exchequer? I mean, what does he do to stop Paul? What did you say, 80% inflation, something like yeah. that? What does he do, Emory, to turn the ship around other than a lira devaluation? I think it sticks to the game plan in the short term, right? Treasury and Finance Minister Mehmet Shimshek has been administrating uh, the bitter pill in slow uh, but increasingly harsher doses since June of last year uh, when he came back to government, took over the reins as economy czar. Uh, the central bank uh, is working in very close coordination with Shimshek. Uh, we don't anticipate that to change, especially in the short term. Erdogan's comments last night also suggest that he's wedded to this economic policy rebalancing normalization effort, but he will want to see results. So if Erdogan had done better yesterday, Shimshek would have a much greater maneuvering room. Uh, now, uh, Erdogan will want to see results uh, from summer onwards once we've hit peak inflation and it's rated around 75% in May. Uh, if Shimshek doesn't deliver, then I think uh, we're in a bit of a tight spot uh, from uh, fall onwards. Um, and in terms of what he will do, we anticipate him to continue quashing consumer demand. So it's very bad for the households and then selective lending to export oriented businesses. But a lot of SMEs are going to be hurting from this. So, Emre, just give us a little history lesson here. How do we get to this point with the Turkish economy? Um, let's see, 2011, Erdogan secures re-election as prime minister, calls it my master period, and starts banging on about the interest rate lobby and says high rates cause high inflation, I want low rates. A succession of central bank governors uh, play with magical realism, create these interest rate corridors, do backdoor tightening while loosening at the front, the banking authority undermines what they're doing. Fiscal and monetary policy don't speak to each other. And in the end, Adam puts all the burden on very loose credit to keep mm. consumer demand mm. going. You have that, uh, especially on the back of the global financial crisis and the period that followed with all the quantitative easing, extra loose right. monetary policies, negative real rates. He got away with it for years and years <laughs> and years until he couldn't. Uh, and it really accelerated under the first executive presidency term starting in 2018, when he got rid of all the capable policymakers right. in his cabinet, appointed his son-in-law to run the economy, who proceeded to sell more than $125 billion in reserves to keep the currency stable. I look at someone like you, and that would be Sonar Kagapte. In his wonderful book, Erdogan's Empire, it was my book of the summer X years ago. Yeah. And his new book is A Sultan in Autumn. Is Erdogan in his autumn facing winter? Or at 70 years old, does just, he just keep going? I think you will find it increasingly difficult to keep going. Uh, folks that I talked to in Ankara and also in Istanbul who are close to the president uh, always say that uh, Erdogan is no different than any other successful, strong Turkish leader. He will be at it until the very end. So I don't anticipate Erdogan to willfully step down from any powers of position, uh, positions of power. Uh, that said, uh, yesterday's election results, the makeup of parliament currently, the economic challenges, these are the worst circumstances he's ever faced since coming to power two decades ago.